Hello there, and God bless you in that precious, most wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, this is another day the Lord God has made, and we're going to rejoice in the Lord our God. Hello, my name is Pastor Willie Johnson. And I'm Evangelist Carolyn Johnson. And again, we're so thankful that you have taken out time of your busy schedule to be with us. Listen, God is an awesome God, and because he's awesome, guess what, my brother, my sister? You are indeed is awesome as well because he was created in his exact image and he knew exactly what he was doing in his intention and purpose. Amen. 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 So we're going to continue to go on with our precious study in regards to the authority of the believer. I said the authority of the believer. The Bible lets us know that in the last days, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. But God has not left us orphan. He has not left us without power. We still have the power of God residing down on the inside mm. of us. Amen. Jesus, after his resurrection, told his disciples, Behold, all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. Amen. Because all power has been given to him, he encouraged us to utilize that power to go and persuade and win men and women to the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Now listen, Satan has power, but he has wicked power. Amen. His power does not compare to the power of that of God. Amen. So we thank and praise God again. We're going to continue with this study again, but we're going to take a look at the Old Testament. Amen. I think it's from the book of Genesis. Now, book of Exodus, chapter 7. And we want to just see a, a comparison to some degree as to what's taking place here again. God's power always supersedes the power of the enemy. Absolutely. Amen. There's Satan. Listen, Satan, as a matter of fact, Satan is not God. He's not omnipresence. He's not everywhere at the same time. He's not omnipotent. He is not all power. He's not omniscience. He doesn't know all things. He does not know. He is a created being. Satan was a created being. He was an angel, one of the most beautiful angels there was. Amen. As a matter of fact, Satan looked so pretty. He looked so beautiful. The way God designed and created that fellow, he looked, that brother, I can't call him brother anymore, but he looked so absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> he was created with pipes in his body. Yes. And attached to the pipes were jewelry. And when Satan moved, he made music. He produced music. Somebody said Satan was the, uh, the head of the choir. He was the choir's director. Oh but then somebody said, somebody said, no, Satan was the choir. He wasn't the choir director. He was the choir. Amen. Amen. He was identified as the bringer of light or the bringer of glory. He led the other angels into the worship of God. Mm. You got Michael the archangel. Michael was over the, milita uh, the, uh, the military or the combatant angels. Then you got Gabriel. He was over the messenger angels. And you got Lucifer. His name was mean bring of light. He was over the worshiping angels. Mm -hmm. And he convinced one third of those fellows to fall out with God. Amen. And Jesus, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Amen. So the fellow, he has some wisdom, but his wisdom now is darkened. He has some understanding, but it's darkened. He has some power, but it's weak compared to the power of God Amen. and the power that is in you, the That's believer. Right. Amen, Amen, woman of God. Amen. Amen. So we have the victory right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, whenever we are um, whenever we are confronted by the, the hand of the enemy or the power of the devil, we don't have to fear. Huh? He come as a bluff. He come as a roaring lion. He come with scary faces and mad. All of those things. We don't have to fear. Amen. Huh? We don't have to look on. We don't have to look on this out up here. We know we got all the power of God residing within us. Amen. Amen. My Amen. God. Before I look at this passage scripture in Exodus chapter seven, woman of God, do you have anything to share with us on that regards? No, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying everything that you're, you're speaking. My God. And the fact that the enemy was so caught up in, in pride. Uh huh. Pride of how he looked Isn't that how, something? and what he was. He thought that he was able to move without God. Uh -huh. He was able Isn't to that something? Um, detach himself from God and he would be still uh -huh. who he is. Mm -hmm. and without, when we detach ourselves from God, we lose ourselves. Uh -huh. And we are outside of his perfect plan. My God. We must be attached to God in order to know who God my is. My God. And um, when, you, when you detach, you turn into somebody else. Uh -huh. My God. That's it. I mean, when you detach from God, uh, what is death? Death is separation. separation. Death is not necessarily annihilation, no longer exists. Death means the spirit and soul leaves the body. Mm -hmm. uh, what is spiritual death? When Adam and Eve bit that fruit, when Adam, Pastor, when Adam bit that fruit, death occurred. Mm -hmm. Spiritual death occurred. Spiritual. He moved away from God. Yes. Sin came between him and God. Yes. So again, as the woman of God was saying, when we move from God, yes. death, death take place. Yes. Amen? Amen? Darkness begin to come in. Make Amen? You ugly. Make you very, very ugly. Amen? So Exodus chapter 7, verses 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Look at that. I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, 
and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Watch this here now. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden the heart of Pharaoh, I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto thee, that I may let that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies and my people in the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. Now, if we look right here, let's take a look at verse. What well, we continue, we continue. Now, verse of uh, verse seven. And Moses was four score, four score years old, eighty years old, and Aaron four score and three years old, when they spake unto Pharaoh. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, saying, okay? And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show me a miracle for, show me a miracle for you. Then shall thou say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Now watch this here very carefully. Now this is where we're going with this here. Again, verse 9. Exodus 7 and 9. And when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you. Then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Okay. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. Yes. Who did so? They did so as the Lord commanded. Now you're talking about the power and authority of believers. Some folks think, well, God turned the serpent, turned the rod into a serpent. What's what, what happening here? Verse 10 again. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. Yeah. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers and the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments. Now, these magicians and these sorcerers, they also turned their rods into serpents. Mm. Now, God didn't turn their rods into serpents. No. It was these men through satanic power. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this here. Watch what happened. These individuals, see, many of us as in Christian and Christendom have no idea of the true power that we're dealing with on either side. Many of us don't have the idea of the real power of God, nor many have no idea of the real power of Satan. These natural men who use the restroom just like any other men, they didn't just hypnotize the people to make them think they're turning physical objects into living, breathing creatures. They actually turn physical stone, physical sticks into living, breathing creatures we know to be snakes. Mm. It's not a joke or a game. It's not. So, woman of God, what are we dealing with? So, the real power of God. Listen, we got people right now in Vegas who is practicing serious witchcraft, yes. serious sorcery. Amen. We got people right here in Vegas who are putting curses, legitimate curses upon people. Mm -hmm. Real curses. People are dying. My God. Huh? Come on, talk to my woman of God. Amen. We got now listen, now Vegas is child play compared to other countries. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. But these individuals have tapped in, have purposely tapped into the spirit world, the satanic, demonic spirit world, and given themselves over to the devil. And the devil is working miracles through these individuals. But as we see in this passage here, verse eleven. Exodus 7, verse 11. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. Amen. My God. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. God's power always. My God, my God. Enemy. Isn't that wonderful? But we had to stand and wait. Take your time, woman of God. You see, what we do is we panic. Uh-huh. Get scared, we, nervous. We get scared, we get nervous. But we're supposed to ha remember that we have all God's power within us. My God. And that the enemy is, he's seek he's he's going to and fro. Seeking whom he may devour. Who, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. And uh, roaring as a lion. Uh-huh. He's presenting himself uh -huh. as a lion. Yeah. As if he's more triumphant uh -huh. than the power of God. My God. He already knows that he's defeated. But he he but he knows that you don't know. That's He's right. Banking on the fact that, that you don't know who you are. That is it. And that he will be able to seduce you, convince you, lying devil, <clears throat> through some My type of God. delusion. Yes. That he is he is 
all power within uh -huh. himself and uh -huh. that he has power over you. Uh -huh. The enemy doesn't have power over you. My you would God. have to give it over to him. Jesus. He shall my oh now, Hallelujah. He, he, that's why mm. Jesus came because when, Jesus. when Adam sinned and he lost control. Yes. When Jesus came came uh -huh. and he died, he took back the keys. That's right. He took the control back. Uh -huh. And then he gave us the My power. My God, Jesus. Glory be to God to share in with him. Uh -huh. And that power resides in us. Right now, every believer. In every believer. My so therefore, God. no matter what the enemy is uh camouflaging as, yeah, yeah, yeah. copying the, uh -huh. the things of God and presenting them and putting a label on there as if it is God. Uh -huh. That's why we need spiritual discernment. Yes. And we need the power of God My to God. resist these type of temptations and so that God can deal with us regarding these type of influence. My God, woman of God. You know, um, in 91 Psalms it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall uh -huh. abide under the shadow of the Almighty, mm -hmm. which is one of my favorite scriptures. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Take your time. My God, in Him will I trust. Uh -huh. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise and pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. Uh -huh. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. And, and this whole scripture all the way down to 16 is so such a triumphant mm. um, testimony uh, of the victory and the supply of God. Security is the security of God. <laughs> the security of God's Woo! godliness. When you are in Him, uh -huh. when you're overshadowed by the hand of God, uh -huh. do you really think the enemy can come out and, and pick at you and pull you from up under the shadow of God. My God. He his shadow is over overtaking you. Yes. And the enemy can't come in and take you. He says it's a scripture, pluck you out of his hand. Uh -huh. He can't, can't take do you it. out of the hand can't of God. Do it. So when you're walking in the power of God, that's why we can't walk in fear. Uh -huh. We gotta know who God has what God has established in us. So perfect love casts out all fear. It casts out all so fear. So again, regardless of how eager the the dog